All right, guys, what we're working on today is we are going to be inletting the trigger and the trigger guard. As you can see, there's a whole lot of uh, fitting that needs to be done. This trigger, where it sits right now, doesn't even engage the hammer. So we need to drop that much further down in there. And uh, you can see I got a lot more work on this done, and I fitted the rear and front thimbles uh, and uh, had to make some new pins because the original cross pins for this rifle were not long enough and uh, made some new pins just out of some, uh, some steel rod that I had got the barrel fitted down into the in the stock and everything now I will say this I don't know if it's just a Shenandoah rifle kit or if traditions has taken a nosedive since I got it but this stock has given me nothing but trouble since I started working on this project. Like I, I cannot condone this particular, I don't, I don't even know if it's this particular project or what. Just This stock has given me nothing but trouble. It's all warped and it cracks like no other and there's cracks that were already there that I had no idea were there. And nothing is really fitting together the way it's supposed to. And uh, so I'm just going to grip my teeth and bear through it, get this particular project done for school. Once I have everything done for school with this, I am scrapping this stock. I am pulling all the metal off of this stock and I'm gonna put a proper maple stock on this thing. I'm gonna make this thing beautiful. <sighs> the barrel on the metal, all that's fine. All that is passable, but this stock is terrible. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get working on inletting this trigger. Yeah. All right, so we can see that this needs to come down quite a bit. This screw right here comes from the top of the uh, breech block, the, the tang that come back out of the breech block. That's supposed to screw into the trigger guard and that's pretty much a max death right now. So this needs to be taken down a pretty good bit. So before we even start looking at dropping that in there to fit it, we're gonna start taking down all this meat in here and some of this meat back here because that's going to be a, a good bit of work and I'm not going to make y'all suffer through that. You know, just, uh, let's see. Yeah, there's, there's a good bit of depth that I need to take that down. There's, there's almost a good eighth of an inch that I need to take it down to even get this screw to touch the trigger. Like, so I, I can't really be mad at traditions and they're, their job is to offer budget stocks and budget budget kits, just fun little weekend project kits. But uh, you know, may, maybe I'm venting my own little frustrations with this. But uh, this has been a lot more frustration than reward working on this kit. So we're we're gonna do it like I mentioned earlier. We're going to uh, we're gonna replace this stock at the uh, nearest opportunity, and uh, you now do some. Do something good with the with the metal. All right, guys, new plan. So I've got the trigger adjusted this way to where it needs to be to properly engage the sear and the hammer. But there's a massive gap here in the back of the uh, the trigger in the wood because nothing in this stock is inlet to the proper size, and it is pissing me off. So in addition to shaving down the wood on the sides here to actually, you know get access to my trigger, because like, look, look at this, look at this, this is absurd. I'm stabbing myself with my trigger. I'm going to get a piece of dowel, smother in wood glue, and we're gonna fill in that hole so that I have something to, uh, to screw into, because, uh, yeah, it's not a very big screw, and uh, there's not a whole lot, there's just not a whole lot there. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll update you on that. All right, so I've got a chunk of dowel rod that I cut off. I, I couldn't tell you what diameter I used. I just kind of, you know, I was sitting on the workbench, so I just grabbed it and I cut it off, sanded it down until I could get it to squeeze in there, and then I filled in the gap here with some uh, some sandable and stainable wood glue that I happen to have. I know that this is extremely not the proper way to do things, but it's what I've got, and like I said, this stock is getting replaced, so I will do the uh, 
the well and proper thing when I get that new stock. But until I get that new stock, this stock is going to be getting abused and mistreated and, you know, just uh, damn right massacred. So for, you know, until then, while that wood is drying, we're gonna see about fitting this brass trigger guard. And you know what? We're gonna remove some of this meat here. And this needs to come out just a little bit and that should pop right in. That's what we're gonna do right now. Right, so that took a lot less time than I expected. I, seriously, I, I just barely shaved some of the wood out from around here and it just popped right in. It's sitting nice and snug, so I'm gonna pop that out and uh, gonna finish letting that wood dry. So if, if my angles are weird, I'm wearing the camera on my chest instead of on my face. So uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna let that wood glue dry so we can finish setting the the trigger in there, so we can shave off some of this meat up here, drill the pre holes for the screws, and then set the screws into this trigger guard, and then finish shaping up the back of this butt plate, and we will be good to go for this week's segment. All right. All right, guys, so wood glue's dried. We got the trigger set in there. Everything is engaging with the hammer. The triggers are good. We've got the trigger guard inlet where it needs to be. We've got everything pre-drilled and screwed in. Now we're going to be shaping this stock the best that we can to a nice smooth contour. Try to get all this, all this wood matched up to the brass as best we can. And I'm going to... Still need to try to scallop out some of this wood here so I can actually reach these triggers without it stabbing the pad of my finger. Because that's, <laughs> if you shoot, you know what I'm talking about. That is not a good thing. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna see if I can get some wood filler and cram it in there around that trigger guard. This this whole thing has been, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm I'm a little bit of a of a <laughs> of a perfectionist, and uh, yeah. All right, so what we're doing for relieving some of this material here? I'm just I'm just taking my chisel and I'm just shaving away just a little bit at a time. Now this this is a bit of a time consuming process, but I don't want to take away too much material, and then have this rifle not be usable. You know because. All of this is sitting right around the breech block, and that's where all the pressure is going on. This, the explosion happens right here as the bullet goes hurtling down the barrel. So if, if there's going to be some kind of catastrophic failure happen, it's going to be right around here in this area. And uh, I, I just don't want it to be too weak, too brittle. I'm just trying to relieve this, like get it kind of an inward curve into here on both sides so I can get to my triggers without a whole lot of issue. Because I, I just can't believe the inletting job. Like, what I'm, what I'm thinking happened with this stock is they, uh, I'm thinking they cut it while the wood was wet or while the wood was still green. While it was sitting in storage waiting to be shipped out, it, it dried out and all the dimensions got all kinds of messed up and it warped. And, like, this, this barrel channel is not straight. This end, this end up here is not sitting flush to my barrel. Like you, you can't really see it, but I can... Yeah, it's it's, it's not sitting flush. Doesn't, doesn't matter what I do to it. This whole thing is warped, and it's it's just messing with me. So uh, I'm going to do what I can with what I've got. And uh, I've got a file here to start knocking off this edge here, rounding that out. I'm going to start making all this wood back here meet this brass and uh that's pretty much what i'm doing i'm not gonna torture y'all and force y'all to watch that so uh let me get some progress done on that i'll uh pop back in all right now for evening out a lot of this stock i'm just using a hand file and uh for like for us for right here to get some of this even out with the contour of the stumble i'm taking a hand file i'm just rocking it over i'm just doing nice light passes so I start getting things 
evened out with the brass. And I'm not too worried about scratching up the brass right now. Because uh, this brass is going to be getting polished up and cleaned up nice and pretty. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much what I'm doing. Like uh, up here around this thimble, down here on the trigger guard, down here at the toe plate and the butt plate that we uh, fitted earlier. There's this ridge here, this flat cut ridge. I don't know if they did that with a bandsaw, but there, there is a definite edge here that should not have been there in the first place. And uh, since I'm going at it with a hand sign, anyway, I'm gonna clean up some of this brass here at the same time, see if I can get those contours to match just a little bit better, because that's bugging me. So, uh, yeah, just... You know, just getting things nice and smoothed out, nice and worked over, and I'll be going over the hand files, and sandpaper, and all that fun stuff. I'm not, you know, like I said, I'm not going to make you guys watch this whole process, because uh, I'm doing the same thing over and over, the same file stroke, over and over and over, so I'll, uh, yeah, we'll do, how about a snap, we'll do a snap. All right, so what we're working on now, we've got everything pretty much blended. I've got this all scooped out just about as far as I dare. I can I can pull the trigger without too much uh, discomfort, <laughs> hesitance, but the, that, that's all scooped out on both sides. We've got this blended pretty much as well as we can. Since most of this stock was pre-inlet for us, there's not a whole lot I can do about the gaps between the wood and the brass, but I can sculpt the brass here. I can, I can try to meet these toe plates together just about as well as I can. And uh, that's, that's all I'm doing, just going at it with a hand file. And if you watch anybody on YouTube that does any kind of hand work, you know, Exactly what I'm doing. You've seen it a thousand and one times. Just trying to bring this in. I'm trying to meet it there. I don't need this big long swoop coming out and jabbing into the meat of my shoulder. So, uh, yeah. I mean, brass is getting taken off at a pretty good pace. But, uh, once again, I'm not going to sit here and make you watch the whole thing. So, we're going to do another snap. Oh, what do you know? Another snap. All right, so the brass is shaped down here. We still got to carve away these ridges on the sides here and this arch, and that'll be pretty much good. And uh, like like before, I'm just doing it all, doing it all with hand files. And if there's gaps, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. But uh, yeah, eventually I'll get to finish and sand this stock finish sorry finish and stain this sock stock i cannot talk english words all right yeah so eventually for school i'll be finishing this stock you know okay here's a good little tidbit when your file gets full i just take a wire brush and brush it out scrape all that crap out of there see it's already cutting a whole lot better Maybe eventually I'll do a segment on sharpening your files, but uh, not today. Today is not the day for that. Today is just getting everything shaped mildly together and uh, trying to keep some kind of half-decent contour through here. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be knocking down these sharp edges up here, just rounding them over with some sandpaper, but... Uh, you know, that's, that's a really simple thing. Y'all don't need to watch that. Seriously, like two strokes of sandpaper and it's done. But, uh, hey look, just, just a little bit of time with a handful. Look how much closer that already is. Just, yeah. And more file work and more file work and more file work. And since that's all I'm doing with this video is file work and file work and file work. And I, this is just a quick update for you guys, really. Uh, eventually, I will be doing a video for you guys. Not, 
I'll, I'll be doing another video sometime soon outside of the Shenandoah project. I, uh, where did I put that thing? Ah, here we go. This is just a little segment of 01 tool steel that uh, I'm going to be turning into my first engraving chisel. So, uh, yeah. You know, if you're going to be one of those guys, oh, well, how did you get that piece? I cut it off with a damn Dremel. All right. <laughs> it's not that hard. I bought it on Amazon. It's an eighth inch thick. 01 tool steel. It's oil hardening. It's one of the best stuff you can get. So, uh, yeah. That'll be another project for you guys sometime soon, outside of this thing. All right, guys, so there's that video for you. Uh, I know that my posting schedule is a little bit wonky, but uh, as now I'm, I'm posting when I can, getting stuff done when I can. If you've got any recommendations for me, let me know down in the comments, and uh, I'll see what I can do to uh, fulfill those. Uh, like I said earlier, this stock, it's getting replaced. This this stock is atrocious. One, the first opportunity I have to replace that piece of beach with a nice piece of maple, it's happening. And then uh, this piece of beach is going to be the uh, guinea pig for the uh, burn wrap that I was talking about. Uh, basically, I'm just dipping some uh, some Manila rope or uh, hemp rope or something, so, some some kind of nice burnable rope in some kind of nice slow burning medium and. Uh, I'm gonna dip it in that, wrap it around the stock in the pattern that I want, set it on fire, let it burn for a bit so I've got a nice pattern in the stock, and uh, that's good. And, uh, I'm gonna, the main reason I'm talking about doing that is because I can't afford tiger stripe maple. That shit's expensive. And uh, there's a uh, techno loving hillbilly down in Arkansas that helped me out a little while ago, and uh, I promised him a muzzleloader. So that's, that's what I'm doing. I got. Uh, Got a couple of parts on hand, and uh, you know, once I get everything together and I finish this thing, and I'm gonna, you know, once once I'm ready to get get going on, I'll get going on. So, yeah, like, share, subscribe, and uh, see you in the next video.